Hello there. In this video, I'm going to show you how I get ChatGPT 3.5 to get its robot crap together and give me results that are closer to what I expect from ChatGPT 4. I recently got access to ChatGPT Plus, which is the paid version of ChatGPT, gives you access to ChatGPT 4, uh, and it's been amazing. Until you hit that 25 prompt limit that they set, then I have to go back to ChatGPT 3.5, and it's, it's less awesome. I feel so bad for all of you poor souls that are stuck using GPT 3.5 all the time. Emphasis on poor. So I want to share with you how I get ChatGPT 3.5 to perform as good, if not maybe even slightly better than ChatGPT 4. This is a method that I call the two chat method and full disclosure, it requires a little bit more manual effort than just the other ways that I make flashcards with just a single chat. But I think that the extra effort is worth it. And I've done my best to streamline this method so that it really just takes a couple extra clicks. All right, so if you click on the link in the video description, it'll take you to the Notion version of my website. And if you scroll down here to this prompts drop-down menu, you'll see all of the different prompts that I use to create flashcards. And if you look under the prompts for the two chat method, you'll see a couple of code text blocks. Uh, if you're viewing this page through the link, then you should be able to copy them directly to your clipboard by clicking on the right upper hand corner. Uh, this just helps to make it a little bit more streamlined when you're making the flashcards. Basically, the way this two chat method works is that we're separating out the two most complicated tasks into two separate chats. This helps us to be able to keep all of the context for those complicated tasks more consistent. This decreases the need for frequent feedback and it increases the repeatability of the results from the chatbot. In this first chat, basically what we're asking the chatbot to do is to comb through our source text, fix any of the odd formatting that might copy over from our textbook, and create concise bullet points that are focusing on just the information that we want to focus on. And after it does that, we have it place all of the bullet points into a plain text code block, similar to what you see on my website, so that you can just one click copy directly to your clipboard. In the second chat, the task we're asking it to do is to take all of those outputs, all of those concise bullet points, and turn them into flashcards using our formatting criteria and our reference criteria. We also give it a short example to show kind of exactly how we want these flashcards to look. And the next step is to copy the outputs from your second chat and paste them into your Excel spreadsheet. And then obviously you repeat this process as many times as it takes to get all the flashcards you need. Then you save your Excel file as a .csv UTF-8 file and upload it directly into Anki. Now I've compared this method side by side with ChatGPT4 and honestly, there were a lot of times that I preferred the outputs that came from the two chat method over what I was getting from ChatGPT4. But how is that possible? Well, both models are more than capable of creating the same standard of flashcard because it's already well below their abilities. It's even below the abilities of the older versions of GPT. But what is disproportionately more difficult for GPT 3.5 than GPT 4 is following multi-step commands, navigating confusing formatting, processing large amounts of text, and remembering past prompts and feedback. These are all examples of things that it can do, but when it's asked to do them all at once, it really struggles. If you're struggling to get ChatGPT to do what you're asking it to do, try breaking up your task into smaller, more manageable chunks. Chances are it'll be easier for you to explain and it'll be easier for the chatbot to follow. 